My name is Dive. Welcome to Dremel Apotheosis. This is the long-awaited 2.2 update to the best Minecraft adventure map of all time. It is finally here. Today is April 5th, 2024. It has just released. After many years in development on this update, it is finally here to play and enjoy, and I will be doing a lot in this map. And there is a lot to do, so this might be a different pace to the past playthroughs I have done in this map, because there is simply so much to do, and I don't want every episode to be an hour long. But in today's episode, we of course have to start somewhere, so we are inside the spawn room. The lead developers, Kiko100, Roift, um, I'm pretty sure it's Rift, <laughs> and Dome Master, producer and writer. And then over here, the builders, we have Nader Gator, Ashen Cave, Talon101, Elusive, Milk Mortem, Pengo, and Hades. And then we have a cat here, Priscilla. That's kind of an Easter egg on the map. Special thanks to our community. Your kindness and enthusiasm knows no bounds. Our patrons, who are all right here. Our moderators, who are all right here. Terrain made with World Painter by Captain Chaos 74. Credit to the many schematic packs and bundles we used. Names and links on the Planet Minecraft page. And then we have some coders. We have one, two, three, the same. Electro Dragon, Zalvaris, Major Lou, Zerd Guy, and Hotel Bows. And then the artists, Chris. Tetrahedron, Muton Democrate, and his Scotty Biscotti. That is enough of the spawn room. I have set my settings how I want them. We have given credit to the creators. We are ready to initialize. Attempting network reconnection. Success. Critical life support error. 12 pods flatlined. Subject recovery improbable. Commencing emergency stasis termination in pods 1 through 8. Stand by. We got reinforced fiber boots, which are unbreakable. Stasis termination success. Subject vitals okay. Opening pod doors. And I am number 1. Okay. Error. Pod doors jammed. Break glass for manual evac. Oh, no. Good morning, officer. There are some dead people up there <laughs> in the pods. Performing facility diagnostic. Facility running on backup power. Energy grid connection status severed. Manual reboot of facility information terminal required. Performing self-diagnostic. Databank status fragmented. Attempting network reconnection. Success holotext database back online. Yes, this map has a lot of cool new functions and stuff that is not in normal Minecraft. So right here we have holotext. This is a good way to get the world building. Emergency broadcast. Attention, all B1 rank stasis personnel. An energy network collapse is imminent. Please enact stasis protocols immediately. This is not a drill. The Everfear is no longer cooperating. Now, keep in mind real quick that I was spawned in pod 1. This map is designed for up to 8 players, and you should be spawned randomly in each one. I just happened to get one, but in the past I've gotten others. Just up here, there's a little natural area to get some basic resources, and you can probably already tell, even though we are inside, I am playing with a shader pack, because Dremel now has an official shader pack that is supported and should work with the entire map, and it is Sildur's Enhanced. Stasis System Log, only displaying critical logs. Facility breached, unknown entity detected. Critical life support error, 12 pods flatlined, initiating emergency evacuation of pods one through eight. Now a thing about this adventure map is chiseled stone bricks, or really anything that looks like it's more out of place, usually is out of place and can be mined and usually has a secret or some kind of treasure hidden behind it. So if we go up here, we enter a little security room and we have a mysterious figure on the security feed holding a big scythe. As we enter the final stages, numerous fail-saves have been developed. Stasis, the seal, network collapse, the secondary source. I was a major part of the seal's development. What I saw in that facility necessitated its creation. If that fails, stasis should be an acceptable alternative. Oryx's rumination. Up here on the balcony still, stasis, subject, roster. Pod 1 is Vera Thressa. Okay. 
As I mentioned, this map has its own world building, it also has its own characters, and with this update, they've released skins and a little bit more details about the characters. So I was in pod 1, which means I will be playing as Vera Thrussa in this world. <laughs> Thrissa Vera, Avsom's chief science officer, is a somewhat stoic but highly intelligent, observant, and efficient woman. Despite her impassive demeanor, she is quite well liked for her organizational skills and leadership qualities. Thrissa had a collection of potted plants. So yes, I will be using the Thrussa skin, or Thrissa, at least for now. This is what she looks like, and um, it's very weird having a skin that's not my own, but it's part of the map. I got pod 1, Thrissa is in pod 1, so we're just going to be playing as her. I'll explain the other characters as they come up. And if you're wondering more about Thrissa, like Avsom's chief science officer, what all that is, that will be explained as we get into the world. So the other seven player characters are Guri Zed, Bane Vemel, Devro Ib, Oryx Sahane, Voski Otis, Zev Kai, and Akari. In Oryx, you may remember that other hollow text was Oryx's rumination. Continuing out of spawn, we are met with a door that cannot be broken. This is very, very bad. What is happening? Thressa, hey, that's me. Stay calm. Get everyone that's here into their pods. We prepared for this. They were supposed to tell us when it was going to begin. This wasn't planned. They would have told us. This seems reactionary. We don't know what's happening, but we do know that the energy girt is down. All we can do is go through with stasis. You know it doesn't mix well. Limited oxygen supply and fire. Being underground, if a fire started and consumed our oxygen, we would quickly find ourselves in a pretty awful situation. I set up these smoke detectors so that the sprinklers will trigger and the hollow door will open temporarily to increase ventilation. But okay, so we set our fire. Excess smoke detected. Activating fire extinguishing system. Warning, water reserves low. Opening emergency exits. Rude awakening! Did you dream of anything nice? Emerged from temporal stasis. Welcome back to the world of Dremel. There's a pathway here leading into this green mountain. And inside is the Chamber of Dreams. Dremel slumbers deep below. Perhaps one day they will awaken. Stepped into the entrance of the primal caverns. Offerings to Dremel. Snake ornamented compass. A ceremonial compass that will always point to the primal caverns. We also have scales, which are actually emeralds, which is how you trade with the villagers on this map. Outside of spawn, there's this little uh, thing, and it says, To the primal caverns resting place of Dremel, we are just in there, to the village of Drabiel. So now, we have our first location to head to, Drabiel Village. One of the things that makes Dremel such a wonderful to explore map is that it's not just areas that are named and have like lore importance and story importance. There is a lot of secrets that you can find by wandering off the path. I also found a saddle and a chest in there. So now we have our first steed and this horse seems pretty quick. Continuing down the path, I have found this building. And what is inside here? In the beginning, the realm was unborn. There was only silence. The primal tree was the heart of the world, and it made the aspects. Dragon deities who represent elements of creation. These aspects created the land, its features, its animals, and its landscapes. Then, the primal tree created the Dramari, who would go on to become the dominant race of the world. There was peace until two opposing Dramari ideals formed. These two groups would go to war after many centuries, culminating in a battle at the base of the primal tree. The conflict the conflict burned the tree down, and the resulting chaos split the tree into three deities, Malus, Virtuo, and the most important of all the deities, Dremel, who would use their strength to make a new world, void of the old realm's imperfections. Oh my god, uh, I was trying to record like a little b-roll thing for that story, and oh my god, I looked right at an enderman. Uh, get in the water! <laughs> Hello. Oh, that was very scary. Yeah, it became nighttime very fast. Okay, I might have to turn clouds off. Capital Valley. Atop this tower, there's a button and a sign that says Capital Valley. Initiating phase warp. A new advancement placed between places. You feel like your atoms weren't properly rearranged. Oh well. Enter the terminus. Ooh, it is very dark in here. <laughs> Uh, we got a light over here, however. Let's see what's over here. Uh, 
button. Error. Movement detected in compass dispensary. Tier 1B rank recognized security measures disengaged. Welcome back, officer. 3.1% network linkage achieved. Performing travel network diagnostics. Oh, now this is all lit up. Warn. Warn. <laughs> Critical travel network error. Manual reboot required at all linked towers to restore AV Sys database memory and warp travel. Performing database diagnostic. Avsol network terminal online. Why is it dark again? Locator dispensed. Please perform manual reboot on site. So we have our first task. We have to go to Avsol and perform a manual reboot. And this is the compass dispensary. Network terminal locator. Avsol database offline. Manual network reconnection required. Coordinates. Then you can read them down there. <laughs> this is the fast travel system of Dremel. And it is very cool and very fun. So this is a map of the world, basically. And I don't have Optifine, so I cannot zoom in, so I have to do this. But all of those iron bars that you see are the towers in the map. And that one is where we just were, which is Capital Valley. So when I get the towers, they turn into end rods. As you can see, we have a lot to do. We have a few islands. We have another one down there. We have a gigantic amount of towers and places to go. And to get back to where we go, it is just, you know, teleporting buttons. So now we're back in Capital Valley. off the path a little bit, mostly just looking for other structures and treasure to find, and I came across this little graveyard, um, or is it a crypt? I don't know. What is a building next to a graveyard called? And at the top up here, I have found the first of a special item. And this is an artifact. Artifacts are unique items found throughout the world. It is the Gravedigger's Spade with Smite 5 on Breaking 3. A favorite tool of an old grave tender who buried the caretakers of the primal caverns. It is said that their belongings would go missing after death. When it made, and it has four damage and one attack speed. So these artifacts are just fun little tidbits of lore, some world building, and you get a cool little item out of them. And since it's called Gravedigger's Spade, and we have graves here, well, you know, let's see if there is anything secrety that we can find under any of these graves. I'm pretty sure there should be something. Oh, this one looks like that's something. What's down here? We got a chest with a runic catalyst. This is the second one of these I found. It is a small magical orb valued by traders and arcanists. They have several applications in both magic creations and technology. You can kind of think of runic catalysts as extra trading stuff. Now, since this is the first artifact I found, I just wanted to give it a moment to showcase it, but I'm probably gonna find a lot of these scattered throughout many different areas, because there is quite a bit to loot along the map here. Like, I already went up there, and there was a chest, and there's just structures kinda all over the place once you start looking. Okay, I may have gotten a little bit lost while I was off exploring. I found another path, and I'm just gonna follow it for a little bit. We got a sign here, where is this? That leads to a keck, and that leads to a catcher's crypt. Okay, I know where I am now. Oh, <laughs> I've played Dremel a lot uh, over the past few years, so this time I'm trying to pace myself a little bit better. Okay, I see a light in the rock up ahead. Let's uh, head inside. Our horse should be fine out here, but let's get inside somewhere. But we have a little crypt to explore, and uh, if you've watched my videos in the past, you may be starting to recognize this place. Remember that this Gravedigger Spade has Smite 5. Oh no! Okay. <laughs> That's a lot more skeletons than I was expecting to see down here. So, if you are new to my channel and don't recognize this room, uh, this was the old spawn of the previous versions of the map. This is what it looked like instead of that big area with the pods and the little forest where we had to get out of and read the books and stuff. This is the old spawn room of the map. So that area in Spawn Mountain where we had to set the fire to get out of the door and stuff, 
Um, this is what it used to be. It used to be a bit more simple. There is one last secret in the crypt. Um, I'm not sure how you're supposed to find it normally, but in a past beta playthrough, I found it by accident, and I don't know if I ever shared it. But if you break through this wall here, you find a little area, and I forgot there's iron blocks back here. That's very useful. But inside there's a book. A letter addressed to you. Curious traveler, you've done well to find this hidden place. This world was made with many hands, and many hands will shape its future. Enjoy the present, but await the possibilities of the future. For this world will not be the last of Primordial. Thank you for embarking on a journey with us. And if you don't know, that's kind of a little fourth wall break there. I found what I thought was a house here, but it's only one block wide <laughs> for some reason. But on the other side here, we have some ruins. I found some buildings of the ruin that look a little more significant, and I found Go's plate. This advanced Avsomic plate was clearly well cared for, but part of the inscription inside is legible. Go, please use this. It's all I can do to protect you when you get into the is something I love third. But I'm having a lot of fun just exploring out of order, and there is a tower in the distance, so let's just keep exploring. Okay, over on this tower now, there were a few pillagers guarding this uh, little crashed ship here, and right on top here, there's a bell that you can ring. Hey, maybe you should ring that bell below and subscribe to my channel so you get notified when I make more episodes of Dremel and other Minecraft stuff. Subscribing really helps me out, and thank you so much. Anyways, let's get our next tower, but first, I just noticed that the stained glass actually has, like, color rays of light coming through, and I just think that's a really nice detail. Anyways, the Gulf of Dremel Tower, network currently linked to 6.3%. So we spawned about there, got the central tower, and then I've been exploring my way up to the gulf right there. But now that I am a little bit more kitted, I think it's about time that we head back to the quest to get to Avsol. Okay, continuing back down the main path towards that original sign that led to Drabiel, and we are coming up on Drabiel right now, but we got some enemies in the way. Welcome to new Drabiel, children of Dremel. All Dramari are welcome here. Stay and rest tomorrow. Can wait. This is the first of the towns uh, slash villages in the map. Uh, these are kind of scattered all throughout the area. Every town has a nice map, an ender chest or two, and one of these guys, which is a, what is it called? Inventory merchant. And these guys offer unique things like a map of the biome, a map of the entire map, a bundle, which is actually super useful because my inventory is a joke, and a shulker box or runic vessel. And this is one of the things I can use these runic catalysts for. And now that we are inside a village, you may be noticing that the villagers in this map look very different. And if it's your first time seeing it, uh, it is very, very uncanny. But the Dramari have horns and antlers. And actually, you may have noticed that I have antlers or horns or whatever these things are called. This is not an official part of this map's resource pack. There was a creator on the Discord, and that creator's name in the Discord is just A with three dots. Uh, I don't know why typing in chat lags my game out so much, that's very strange. But shout out to A for creating these custom player models for Dremel, because the characters do have their own antlers. And uh, this is Threesa's. And also something kind of funny is Threesa has like a long braid that is part of the 3D model. So if I look up in F5, um, the hair just like stabs her through the chest. Now I do have plans for a base further down the line to properly store all of the unique items that I get. But for right now, I will be storing it inside the library here in Drabiel. Following the compass, we are coming across these ruins here, and uh, it looks quite large. Coming over this hillside, and this is Avsal proper. Remnant of Avsal, once Avsal's great capital city, it is now merely a remnant of an idyllic golden age. Discovered Avsal. We are not quite done yet though, this compass leads us to a specific point, and it looks like it's over on this main land. So yes, welcome to Avsal. This is a gigantic, massive area. I will do my best to explore everything, but it's pretty much a gigantic center island with ruins around it on all sides at the lake. 
I think the way I am going to explore this today, so uh, you guys can keep track, because I'm going to have to do a lot of cuts, this place takes a few hours to explore, is I'm just going to go clockwise. So starting from the dock here, we're going to go in a big circle around, and then once we get back to the dock, we're going to head towards the center. Okay, been exploring some more, found some, you know, normal loot and stuff. For reference, the dock is that way, and uh, this bridge is a landmark to keep track of what side of the lake I'm on. But I came in here, and I already lit the area up, but I found another artifact. Emperor Anir, the last ruler of Avsam, strived to spread his empire to the furthest reaches of the realm, and for his name to go down in history alongside Dren Malsum's. There were a few pillagers in here, and from this area, you can see... That there is another tower over on Avsol. Okay, I have continued exploring, and actually it's been a few days since I filmed the last clip, but I'm in this kind of college, university looking area, and I was over here looking for treasure, and I just so happened to break this block, and we got an enchanting table, which is very nice. Um, I guess I could... Actually, no, I don't have Lapis. That's a bummer. Okay, sword or bow, let's see what enchants I can get. I can either get Bane of Arthropods 1 or Power 1. I think power one is more universally useful, so let's just do that. I think that is about it for the college, however, and uh, for reference, we are on pretty much the exact opposite side that I started on, so the docks are on the exact opposite side over there. Okay, we are about three quarters of the way done with Avsol continuing to loot, and uh, it's night time. I have been fighting through the night. And actually, I need to keep track of my armor durability. I don't want to break any of the artifacts, but I mean, speed boost is just so useful. Anyways, right in here, we have a building full of pillagers. You know, just take care of them real quick. Oh, there's this guy. Is he strong? Eh, just one heart of damage. He's not that tough. I was hearing more pillagers, and they're all stuck in the scaffolding over here. What the heck? I don't know why they can't get out. Or how they got in there. How many are in there? Three? That is so weird. Okay, and with that, now everything on the outer things, I think, has pretty much been looted. So let's finally head towards the middle. I know that took a while, but it's because this place is gigantic. It, oh man, I didn't even loot whatever that thing is. We'll, we'll go back to it. We'll go back to it later. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to do and see here in the future. Okay, as much as there is to loot and explore around here, let's first get all the villagers out of the way. So I'm going to drink some strength, and let's get to fighting. There should be a lot more of them. There they are. Okay, and through this grand door, we got some more. And I think these are the first, like, mini-bosses of the map. And very mini-bosses. We got Smell. And we got Arnstein. <laughs> uh, and I believe that's a Dark Souls reference. So Arnstein dropped the Dragon Slayer Sword, the old withered blade of a fabled Temari hunter. And Smau dropped his hammer, the beloved axe of a former executioner. I think it's Ornstein and Smo that these guys are based on, so uh, I don't know the lore of any of that, if that's a reference. I'm sure it is. And there's one last book, the to-do list. Actually, I think there's two bar books. The to-do list. Restock a Drabiel, scout out the Drehua Temple to the south in Palisades Heath, send letter back to the Verdant Labyrinth Clan, trip to Ebonrun, need explosives for the glowing door. And then there's one more book in here, Ornsten's Journal. Found this old picture in the rubble. Seems to be the only thing left when we arrive. This place has been ransacked by every bandit group since the start of the Third of Eam. Strange that they left this behind, or they didn't find it. I can organize an expedition to find this strange door, but who knows where it could be. Maybe some of the other McMari clans have seen or heard of it. Could head to Okek or Dusps to get some information. As I've heard, their libraries are somewhat comprehensive. We have too much on our agenda, though. Can't go on a goose chase for some cool-looking door. We have our own mysterious door here in Avsal to worry about. And the mysterious looking door, an old picture that showcases a sinister gate. It feels wrong. That is definitely a sinister gate. Hmm. Well, uh, I seem to have left my compass in a chest somewhere. I could go back to the terminus, but there's this thing anyways. What does this do? Attempting network reconnection. Network reconnection success hollow text database back online. I think that's where the compass was supposed to be pointing to. Uh, and we did have a holotext over here. 
Yes, okay, AvSol repository updated. Update from Arena. The preliminary AvSomic energy grid is now complete. It directly connects all our major military and research installations, as well as AvSol to Salonir and the Aviasys network. Now, energy transportation and communication are faster and easier than ever. Future plans include expanding the grid to all AvSomic settlements, but that will take some time. AvSol. Initiating phase warp new tower online, linked to 9.4%. Nice. Okay, so looking on the map here, remember this is spawn, this is the gulf that we got, and then down here that's Avsol. And let's see if I can get another compass just to double check. Click to receive an Avsol terminal locator. Cool. Let's head back there. Uh, where is Avsol? It's over here. And now that we have pretty much control over Avsol, I'm sure there are more treasures to be looted and more Mikmari or pillagers to kill. Uh, I think. Oh, wait, hold on. There's a thingy. We got another hollow text. Green Serpent Memo. Ever since Emperor Dren first secured passage to Mount Yathalix, Avsom has grown at a lightning pace. Now, two emperors later, we are far too big to fail. We're going to be making scales at a pace never seen since before Dremel reforged the world. Energy Turbulence. The last 30 minutes have seen rolling blackouts across the entire energy network as if something is overdrawing and our infrastructure can't keep up. Early reports coming out of the primary energy collection are showing issues with the anomaly stabilizers. Maybe something is up with the Everfear. We're awaiting a status report from COO Oryx on that front. It could of course be something entirely different, but I have my suspicions. Okay, I think this is the last hollow text. Imperial Resignation. And as we close today's gathering, I would like to make an announcement. Effective tomorrow, I, Dren Malsum, will no longer be your emperor. I am old now, and the heart beats only so many times. And I have given my life to founding this great empire, and thus we have brought peace, prosperity, and unity across all of Dremel. Now, I want for only two things. I would like to rest, and I would like to observe this empire to its very end. Alas, only the former may be a reality. I will gladly settle. Go forth, my children. Find your new emperor. May they lead you well. Hail to Avsom. And with that, I think this is Avsol pretty much squared away, except for now. There's probably a few more pillagers and more chests and things to discover. Like that mysterious door that we were told about by Ornstein. And now that Avsol is pretty much conquered, this is where I will be setting up my base for this entire map. Because it's right next to a fast travel tower. We have villagers across the lake to use for a villager breeder and a trading hall. And I just think it's a good base of operations. So I will be spending the time between episodes cleaning up this area and making it feel a little bit more base-like. Thank you all so much for watching. I am so excited to continue this journey of the full release of Dremel Apotheosis. Be sure to subscribe so you see when new episodes come out, and I will see you all in the next episode.